Thank you very much, Sister Sarah. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters, for having us here this evening, giving us such a warm welcome in the community, and coming out to listen to our message. Brothers and sisters, you've listened to the speakers before, and I need not go back so much on the issues that we face in our daily lives. We know that we need something better. As Dr. Rhodes said, it is more than 90% of the earnings or the benefits of what is happening in Guyana today that is going to a few. And this is what the AFC is about, brothers and sisters. It is about ensuring that this development in Guyana transcends and comes down to the working people of Guyana. On whose backs this development is being achieved on. And I stand here before you having been a born PPP. In fact, I literally would not have been born had it not been for Dr. Jagan. My father was one of the PPP scholars to Germany. And he married my mother over there. And the German government at the time was not allowing its citizens to migrate. And it was through Uncle Chetty's intervention that my mother came to Guyana and I came into existence. And since then, brothers and sisters, I grew up with the PDT. And I grew up to understand that what is needed is the fight for the working people. It was never about race or anything else. You always heard about the sugar workers, the rice workers, and the bauxite workers. But what is happening today? There is very little left for the workers. And on top of that, we have what? The AFC's vision is one that will build on what has happened in the last years. I'm not here saying that the PPP has done nothing at all. Yes, there have been achievements. But we are here to build on those and see that it goes down. And our vision, um, in particular, starts with the sugar industry. That's what is called ethanol. Ethanol is a fuel made out of sugar that the Brazilians are experts in and that is a lucrative world market. And more than that, producing ethanol in Guyana would ease our dependency on foreign oil, such as from Venezuela. It is the ARC's vision to re-engage the Brazilians to establish the ethanol industry. It will see better pay better conditions for our sugar workers. In 2006, the Brazilians came with an offer of a 300 million US dollar investment. The PDP never bothered to answer the people, and it just went away. You have to understand what is happening, brothers and sisters. The industry has been kept underdeveloped so that they can put their hands on the lands, the prime lands. And I'm mad, not chunks of land of Leonora. We in the AFC will review these deals. And where we have found them to be illegal, those lands must be returned right. to the sugar workers right. and to the sugar industry. <laughs> and we are strengthening the sugar industry and the production of ethanol. We are not as bound to trade our party from Venezuela and oil. Today, the rice farmer works harder for the money he's making because we are still trading our raw products. So once we ease our dependence, we will also work towards the rice industry, getting better markets, putting our foreign servants to useful work, looking for these markets. We have foreign officers all over the world that are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then we will do something, it is a simple thing called value added. It is taking the raw rice and making rice flakes. Like what we are buying, the rice krispies we are buying coming back from America. 
We can do that here in Guyana. Rice cakes can be produced on a massive scale. Soap and rice pudding, which is a very nutritious snack, being sold all over the world, except Guyana rice producing nation does not do it on a commercial scale. And rice pudding involves rice, sugar, and milk. It means a cattle farm and a rice farm and a sugar worker will benefit from this simple value added. We will also encourage agro-processing. Fancy word, but it's very simple. It's as simple as using a solar dryer for your, for your agricultural produce, especially when you have excess or you don't have sufficient transportation to market. You process it and it becomes a more valuable product. It brings money to the pockets of the people, brothers and sisters. That is what we are looking for. That is what we are setting out to achieve. That anyone with a will who wants to work will be able to get at work and will have that enabling environment. And as part of that environment is a question of security. The ALC has been talking about security a long time. In fact, Mr. Ramjatan has a history from since 1992 of arguing for police reform so that we can have a more secure climate in Guyana. And WikiLeaks today is vindicating what the AFC has been saying. That everything we said is true. That there was help winning from outside. The Canadians, the British and the Americans and the PPP turned it down. We will go back to those countries and ensure that we start securing our nation from day one that the AFC comes into office. Yeah. And with greater security, there comes investment, there comes job, and there is security for our young people. Our people should not be running out of Guyana to the islands. We have those opportunities right here, brothers and sisters. And that opportunity is, you can see it in this same village here. I visited the gym and the computer center that was set up by my friend Gopal, who I went to school with. In fact, Gopal was a, was a pioneer with me at Freedom House in the old days. I'm passionate about development. And that gym is a free gym that he set up, and he set up that computer center. We in the ARC will work with persons who do things like that. We will not come in and impose our own program. For example, the sharing out of laptops that will occur probably in a few weeks time. We are saying yes, computers are good. I'm a computer person, I agree with that. But we need to know how we are spending our money. We are spending six billion dollars to buy these laptops when we have young people in Guyana who know how to assemble computers and set them up in centers just as we have here. Enterprises have already shown how it can be done. And that the young people are responsible. And that the young people can take us to a better future. We are also very concerned when we look at the community, we look at the roads, and the drainage, and the corruption that is involved there. And beyond the corruption, it is also because we have not had local government elections since 1994. So there is a lot of lawlessness. And when we have that problem table of the community center there where the gym and the computers, we have that problem with a block making establishment in the village here that is inconveniencing the residents. That establishment is not providing enough jobs for the community here. These issues should have been looked at by an effective NDC. Citizens should not have to suffer. We want development, yes. But it has to be done in a fair and equitable manner. And not just for those people who want their connections to do as they like. There has to be justice, brothers and sisters. The justice that was spoken of by Dr. Jagan. That is what I believe in. And the fairness. And for the working people of Guyana, brothers and sisters. And those of you who know your history, but know that in 1955, when the original PPP split, the country was blighted. And today, we have that chance to do it over again with the AFC. The AFC, for the first time since 1955, is bringing all of our people back to 
together. The working people of Ghana must stand united. As I said, it is not a race problem. You go all over Guyana. It is the working people that are punishing. Back around you, 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 you fuck up a bar and chain. When the rich people that are not connected are living their high life. Imagine the minister tells police who are being paid $45,000 a month. They must live within their means. This is why I said it's a class struggle. It is a struggle of those who don't have and those that have. Our police must be better paid. Yes. I'm sure our nurses and our teachers to give our young people a secure future. And there is money to do it, brothers and sisters. As Dr. Ross so pointed out so clearly when he said 30 billion dollars a year is lost through corruption and wasted and squander mania. VAT today is earning 8 billion dollars more than it did in 2007. Almost 30 million for this year, 30 billion for this year, brothers and sisters. So please listen to our message and understand that what we offer, and it goes both ways, we are here to serve, we are not here to rule. We are offering our servitude to the people of Guyana so that what is ours should be ours and not just into one group. Right. It is time, brothers and sisters, for change. That's yes. right. It is time that we do the right thing. That's yes. right. And it is time that we take our country forward yes. as right. one people. Yes. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Thank you. All right.